Aloha everyone, welcome back to 13 Nights of Tiki Frights. 13 Nights of Tiki Frights is an annual event of tiki mug giveaways and interviews with uh, like-minded tiki artists, uh, ceramic artists, bar designers, all kinds of people that uh, work in tiki. And we're super excited tonight for a couple reasons. The first reason is we're giving away this cool Mr. Bali High ceramic mug here. Check this out. It has a special uh, limited edition glaze. Totally spooky, perfect for 13 nights of Tiki Frights, right? The lid is removable, so it's easy to clean, and it's got a straw hole up here in the top. So this is our mug giveaway tonight. We're gonna be announcing the winner here uh, at the end of an interview because we wanna talk to uh, Woody Miller of Woody World. We're pretty excited about it. Before I invite him in here, uh, just to let everybody know, uh, we are proudly sponsored by a few different people. Uh, Surfside Sips, who has provided these cocktail straws, will be giving this away later on in the show as well, which is a little ghost cocktail straw. And then the Black Lagoon Rum has gifted us this ghost pin to give away. So that's another cool giveaway happening tonight, only if you are watching live. We are also sponsored by Squid, who does not have an Instagram, but is an amazing uh, tiki mug sculptor and artist. He goes by the name Dave Cohen, Squid. And then uh, Scooter, Art of Scooter, if you don't know him, he designed our logo, the Search for Tiki logo, uh, with the Polynesian girl holding the purple tiki mug. He also designed our 13 Nights of Tiki Frights logo. He's an amazing, talented artist. Give him a follow, Art of Scooter on Instagram. Let's see if we can get world in here. There he is. Aloha. How's it going, man? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm excited to have you on. Get right there. There we are. Yeah, me too. I was excited to hear you talking about squid. Uh, yeah, you, you're friends with squid? I don't actually know him. So like when I got into Tiki, he was, uh, I don't know, like kind of out of it or whatever. He like had designed a bunch of mugs and he kind of yep. went away and now he's back doing more stuff. So that's cool. From the yeah. shadows though, because he doesn't have his own Instagram. So it's like he's the yeah. mastermind behind all these, these mugs. Uh, they just had one come out with Tiki Bauer, which is like a, uh, a squid, oh, yeah. which is actually, so he made his first squid mug, which is weird because he goes yeah. by squid, right? <laughs> Earlier yeah. this year and now uh, within a year, he's made two squid mugs. So oh, he's really? making up for, for lost nice. time, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good. Yeah, he's good. He doesn't really do, I don't know, Instagram or social media much, but I've never met him in person. He's a good guy. Yeah. But how are you doing? Cool. Good. Doing great. Can you hear when me? Did you, when did you get into Tiki? Oh, maybe like seven, eight years ago, probably. Uh, I don't know. I was into Hawaiian stuff uh, for a long time, and I would always like buy Hawaiian shirts at the thrift store. Yep. That kind of thing. And But then a friend of mine, the artist Christine Benjamin. Okay. Um, I don't know if you know her, but she, we became friends, and she's like, oh, you need to come down to this like big event, Tiki Oasis, and sell your art. Uh, this is like maybe like 2013 or so, something like that, 2012, 2013. And so I was like, sure, I don't know what that is. That sounds super fun. Uh, and then we went, we had a booth and we shared uh, we shared a space with Tiki Rob and Tiki Pop, Scott and Rob from Maui. And, All of you uh, were in one booth? Yeah. And then even uh, Jason, I don't know if you know him, Tiki JS, Tiki J, yeah. who does the lamps. Makes the, the lamps. Yeah. It was like a kind of a double booth. We all kind of set our stuff up and had a, we all sold together uh, all weekend. It was super fun. And I was like, this is amazing. I didn't know there was a whole thing, you know, like I just didn't know that there was all these people into it. So, yeah. That's, Mind blown. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I'm never not going to go to this event. And at that but, time, you so you you painted, right? Right. Uh, yeah. But in terms of the other stuff, had you ever you hadn't done ceramics? Had you ever like carved wood? Uh, not really. Just done a little bit. Like I went to art school, so I've done a tiny bit of ceramics and like tiny bit of wood carving. But I was mostly just painting then. Um, 
And so I did like lot, just paintings, tiki paintings. And, uh, and then I started doing a little bit of black velvet work. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, I really wanted to get into mugs. I just, I actually, I went to Maui to Scott's little booth. He has like, I don't know if you know him, Scott Beach Scott Bombs. Taylor. Yeah, Beach Bombs on Maui. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he has like this cool little uh, shop in Maui where he, he has like, I don't know, sunglasses and towels and stuff. But he also has tiki mugs, like his and other people's. Yep. And uh, I was like, this is so cool. Like, this is so cool. I want to do this. You know, like I just like started getting into doing mugs, kind of like took a class and learned what I could. It was not the same as today where <laughs> you have Van Tiki like videos. And, yeah, and you're you know, the 101. Like, Every week right. there's a new 101 class. Yeah, exactly. It was like, we had Tiki Central, it was like an online forum and you would yep. just, you know, read whatever I could or ask questions like, how do you do this and how do you do that? And so kind of got into it then and um, it was about did 2014, you, 2015. Did you like borrow someone's kiln or you went out and bought a kiln? And I got a kiln. And... I, a friend of mine was getting rid of one, so I got a tiny little tiny kiln. Uh, and it like didn't work so i had to fix it which was kind of a good thing because then i had to learn how to use you know kill them how it works I yeah fix it. so tiny i don't know i could probably only fit like maximum eight or ten mugs in there at a time um and i just did that for several years uh, what did you what did you start with did you start right in with a tiki yeah uh well i took so i took a class uh like at a I don't know, community clay center kind of thing. And, you know, it's, it wasn't for tiki mugs, it was for ceramics. So we did yep. wheel throwing, we did slab building, we did all the stuff. And like on the side, I was like, <laughs> little tiki mugs. And the hey first day in class, she was really like, do this. yeah, her first day, she's like, I don't know why you came in here, but no ulterior motives. Like, this is what we're doing. Right? <laughs> we're doing uh, throwing pots, we're doing all this stuff you're not going to do whatever you want, but I would do that anyway. And I kind of throw them on the shelf in the kiln room. And then towards the end of the class, she's like, those are really great. This, those tiki mugs are cool. Like you should keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, and then, uh, it was mostly like a few hand built things. And then let me see. And then I, I guess I learned to make a mold. And so I just did a, I don't remember what, Oh, my first, Tiki was this little short one. I don't think I have any around. Oh, hold on just a second. I think I have one. It was, it was this guy. Uh, I don't make it anymore. That's your, that was your very first mold? Yeah. Uh, so so it, is it two tones? You got like the blue short. and the purple? Yeah, this one. I made, I don't know, maybe a hundred of them. Before That's the awesome. Went bad. The lighting isn't great. Let me see if I can get a light. There, it's a little better, huh? Yeah, so he, this one is two tone. You know, I would do like the wood glaze or whatever different yep. uh, kind of things. Like now, when you're nice. making mugs either then or now, do you, do you draw sketches or do you just go straight to the clay? Uh, both. I do both. I have, you know, notebooks of tiki's and drawings and sketches and stuff like that. Cause I did painting. So like I was doing painting. So I have, you know, drawings from yep. painting ideas. And then uh, I do some fabric design too. Like I have designs up on spoon flower. And uh, so I have like a lot of pattern ideas yep. uh, that I'll draw from, but like, um, yeah, I'll usually sketch it out just so I can get an idea for, you know, what I'm going for. And a lot of times I'll use a, a tiki that I've seen kind of as a reference. You know, yep. sometimes I'll see something that exists and be like, that's so cool. I wonder if I could do a mug like that. Um, so, yeah, we'll kind of start from that. And maybe I'll draw it out and try and uh, work it into like a usable mug kind of form or shape like you know figure out where the opening is going to be and how i can do the mold that kind of thing do you remember 
uh, what artist or what mug it was that you saw that was like, man, I want to do that? Uh, I think it was, it was, there was a couple of Scott's mugs. He had yep. been doing it for a little bit already. And his were just so cool. I just, you know, I hadn't seen any like, usually what you see is like the old, I don't know, Harvey's mugs or Trader Dick's or, you know, the old like, OMC mugs, the vintage kind of thing. Yeah, they're they're kind of glossy. They have a different feel. Right. They, right. they feel more manufactured than uh, yeah. Tiki Pop. Tiki Pops, actually, Tiki Pops, Tiki Robs, and your mugs, they all have that uh, that wooden kind yeah. of. They almost don't look like ceramics. Yeah. Right. And and so I hadn't seen that before his mugs, and I think he had like a Moai, and I, you know, we bought. I bought that, and uh, it was. I was like, this is crazy. I didn't know you could make them like this. I think they're all just shiny brown or whatever, like the vintage. I mean, the vintage stuff's cool and it has its own thing. But like, you know, if you're not into the Tiki scene, or at least at the time then, it wasn't as easily yep. accessible, you know? Instagram didn't exist. And so it was like you had to know someone or go to an event or something to find this stuff. So, yeah, when I went to his shop and saw that, I was like, these are really, really cool. I think he might have had a couple of Gecko pieces there, too. At the time, Gecko had one called Cuckoo Kachu. It's like this little short, yeah. kind of like a coo, like a whole little body. And it was, yep. uh, I think he had Tiki Farm do it. I'm not even sure. And it was kind of like black and white with red inside, like kind of that classic look. And it was so cool. I just, you know, I was like, this is different. This is like a real tiki. It feels like a real tiki. So, yeah, I was inspired by that kind of thing. I think I bought a tiki farm. They had a trio at the time by this guy named Chung Golio. Have you heard of him? Yes. I haven't, I haven't spoken to him. I don't yeah. know him personally, but I know the name. Yeah. yeah. I think he lives in Hawaii. I'm not even sure. He had a few. There was like a Lono, a Ku, and something else, like a Tangaroa. And so I bought one of those, and I really thought that was cool because it looked like a tiki, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, that was kind of the first mugs that I got that I was into. And then I just started searching eBay and found right, came upon Monk Tiki and then went down that rabbit hole. Trying to get How much time monkey. do you think? Of, yeah, that's a rabbit hole in and of itself. Monkey. Yeah, right. Those guys are, are nuts, Paul. Some of those yeah, mugs, I, I, I just don't understand. You look at them and it's like, man. Yeah. You busy. are on the next level. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> How long do you think it was between the time that you, you got your first mug and you were making mugs? Oh, uh, I don't know. Probably. I mean, I, so I. After I kind of was like, I just want to dive into this. Like, I think after I got back from that Hawaii trip, maybe may have been like a month or two before I was like, I just want to try this out, you know? And so I yeah. went and bought some clay and started like sculpting some things. Uh, I was also doing little resin sculptures at the time. Of course you were. I did like, <laughs> yeah, like everything. For those that don't know, uh, instead of asking what Woody does do you're better off asking what he doesn't do because you make lamps you make shelves you carve tiki's you do fabrics you do yeah. stickers i think i read in uh an article you did children's books i did done all yeah. kinds of stuff so like yeah like before tiki i did children's books i illustrated them and i was like a landscape painter for a while did landscapes and i don't know all kinds of different art i mean art kind of a crazy thing sometimes like you just I'm interested in everything and then you kind of try everything out until you settle into the things that yep. you like to do or that get response from people so do you get uh, bored uh yeah a little bit I think that's why I don't do like 300 of a mug you know or yeah anything like because I'm like I don't want to make 300 of anything you know I want to make like <laughs> 10 and move on so that's I like to do a lot of the one off glazes like this, you know, yeah. just like what's going to happen if I add put these two glazes together kind of looks cool like it's, it's all right, but like experiment kind of so I like to make a mug and then try different glazes on it and see what like really looks cool what doesn't and then try those treatments on other mugs. So 
a lot of my stuff that I do, like my own things, will be one-offs like that. Like I'll do, I've got That's some my worst designs. nightmare. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because uh, yeah, obviously we run the the Search for Tiki mug website where we're yeah. cataloging mugs, and so there's a few artists. You're one of them. Where it's like, yeah. really, every single mug is different. <laughs> really? How am I going to do this? Yeah. But then you have like the wood grain like a lot of them are wood but they'll just yeah. have different interior glazes or different pattern i'll do patterns on the back you know so i just like that's a way that i can add is this a new one designs patterns yeah yeah so uh this is the glaze that's coming out saturday the, right yeah with this Ooh, let's look at the interior. inside. Speckled, is it like speckled green? Yeah. I don't know if you see that green. And, and then the outside is like a, it's like a kind of an olive dark brown green kind of yep. wash. Has this pattern on the back. Now the pattern on the back, is that part of the mold? No. Uh, when it comes out of the mold, it's, it's clean on the back. And that's okay. the thing I do. It's like a silk screen. Yep that I do on a lot of mugs. It's like a way that I can add, um, dip, like here's one of the little screens. So like I can add this pattern. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I can make all kinds of patterns or like what I've done is for Tiki bars. Like I did some mugs for uh, the Con Tiki in Oakland and I can add, you know, make their logo, put that on the mug, but it's glazed. So it's fired. It's not gonna come off. But it's uh, it's like a silk screen, so it kind of looks like just a black. Okay, so that's that. So it's uh, if you're if you're touching it, it's smooth. Right. It's not yeah. necessarily like yeah, carved yeah, in. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Yep. Like, you know, you see the like the the texture yeah. here, and then that's the smooth pattern. Tricks so, of the trade, man. Yeah, just kind of like a different, uh, a little something different, you know. And then I, you can get like pretty good details, like nice little things like that, that sometimes might be hard to carve or take a long time to clean up. So um, how, or, do you, you know, how do you make you those? Are you carving those in, in like blocks of wood and then printing? Oh, the, no, that's, so it's like a, it's basically like a, like a silk screen, like you would do a t-shirt, right? Like this, they, yep. they, you have a design and it's on a, like a really fine mesh screen. And then they make a stencil on it with a, like a, a I don't know, it's like a chemical film that you expose the light and it's this whole process that that you do. And um, so like with t-shirts, they, you know, and you use ink and you screen it on and you switch it if you're gonna do two, three, four colors or whatever and you have to align it all. And I've done a little bit of t-shirt printing, surprise. <laughs> so I was like, what Why am I not do that on ceramics? And I found people doing this on ceramics. I was like, that's a cool way to like, add a little detail like that or like put the bar's name on there you know what i mean um, yeah. just for something different so you can have some like raised you know like uh, lettering whatever but then you also have a little bit of that it's just something another texture kind of so then i i, I use that, that and it's like a, it's like a stencil and then i make a, a paste with glaze and silk screen that on there so and then when I fire it, it, it's it's glazed on there. Yep. So yeah. So you said you uh you don't want to make three hundred mugs. It's too many mugs. That's not fun. Totally get. Yeah. It. What's the what's the most mugs you've made of a single mold? Uh, two hundred. Not from one mold, but like one design. Two hundred. Yeah. Mugs probably was the most I did. For a while, I was working with an, an art studio, and there was like four of us in there uh, called Minihuni Design Group yep. in, in Oakland here. And so uh, that was a lot easier, you know. Right now, it's just me. Like, uh, we're not a group anymore, but like when we were uh, doing our thing at the studio, you know, there's four of us working on it. So we made a bunch of molds, you know, the standard way people would do uh, big runs of mugs. So we did like some for Zombie Village. I think I did 200 uh, for who else? Uh, Trader Vic's. 
I did one yep. for them. I did one for for Brian Reckemucker, B Rex mug. Yeah, I hate uh, B Rex. And I like to do two where <laughs> um, I don't know, like I did a hundred of one glaze and a hundred of another, which I thought was cool because then I'm like, if you don't like one glaze, you can buy the other. But then another friend of mine who collects mugs was like, but now I have to buy two because I want them both. <laughs> I want both glazes, right? That's how it works. That's how they get yeah. you. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I just, I feel like the more you have of one thing, the less rare it becomes. You know what I mean? But I get like, you you want to make enough for everyone that wants one to get one. But at the yep. same time, like, I don't want to just make thousands of mugs, you know, that are the same thing. I want like a little more rarity to them or, you know? Yep. So now it's just me doing it. Um, in my studio at home and I don't want to do a hundred mugs. <laughs> I'll, I'll do a hundred, but I don't want to do 300. It's like, you know, I don't know how I have like a small space and I have other things happening. Like you said, like I was carving a tiki for a new bar recently. And then I was working on some other carvings for them and, you know, like have different things going on. Cause I just, yeah, like, you got a lot of stuff in the fire. Yeah. So, so someone was just saying, yeah, yay zombie village. I wanted to talk to you about Zombie Village a little bit, yes. if you don't mind. I, yes, uh, so I recently, I went to Undertow's uh, fifth anniversary okay. for the Diablo mug. And it, the flight's kind of expensive. So while I was over there, I was like, I'm just going to make a week of it. I'm going to go to as many tiki bars as I can. And I'm yes. going to start in San Francisco. So my plan was uh, the, the stretch, right? There's four bars. There's Pagan Idol, Zombie Village, Smuggler's Cove, and then uh, Last Rites. Yeah. So I started at Pagan Idol. I had a good time. I got to Zombie Village. I was blown away. I stayed <laughs> yeah. there way too long. I drank way too much. And I fell asleep. <laughs> really so I was not you. able to finish my Tiki tour after oh, flying no. to San Francisco. That really? bar is bonkers. It is. Yeah. It's cr I like like I love it. It's crazy to me too. Uh, first of all, if you come back up, you need to see Smugglers. Last oh, I've been to Smugglers. Too, but like, you know, they, Smugglers yeah, they is... reopened. I, so I went there the next night. That one I oh, could okay. salvage. Oh, Last good, rights good. I couldn't because they're closed on Sundays. But uh, I've been to Smugglers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, like Smugglers is the first of the new, I don't know, era of Tiki Bars or whatever. But uh, yeah, Zombie Village was, I don't know. The, after How'd they that did come Pagan, about? Every, after they did Pagan, they were like, you know, they would do room parties and things like that at Tiki Oasis. And I got to know some of the people just from that and going in there, like, you know, just going to Pagan, because that was the Zombie Village before Zombie Village, you know. It was like yeah. the first really cool, big, huge uh, Tiki bar. Most of the places are smaller around here. So, yeah, that's, uh, my, that's what I found interesting, both about pagan idol and to a bigger extent zombie village because when i think of tiki yeah. bar i think kind of like closet you know small space low yeah. ceiling almost like a basement and then you go into zombie village and it's like cathedral ceilings it's like yeah. how is this a tiki bar like these two things are not supposed to jive right exactly and somehow like that works but they also do have that tiny the, the like the little huts behind the bar yep I'm sure and you, you got that, the landing there. with all the skulls, uh huh. the yeah. balcony. Did you go up there in that? I did, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I took a, they were super kind and took me on a tour of the whole place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so I guess basically, like, I met Doc, uh, Doc Parks, and got to know him. And then when they were doing Zombie, he just called me and was like, hey, we have these carvings. Uh, if you can do that maybe you know can you you are you interested i was like totally like you know they're like we're having a new bar um they're the big canoe carvings up you know yep. to the left when you walk in way up by the ceiling i was like yeah totally i've never done that before but that sounds awesome so i did that so there's another guy ivan who really was like the lead artist on that he did pagan and he did Okay. Zombie, and he was the kind of the, the brains behind it, and he did a lot of the work. He carved one of those two big tiki's. So Crazy Al did one, and Ivan did the other. That are are the ones that are in between the the murals of the yeah. Caribbean and uh, Polynesia. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. 
Um, so this guy, Evan, he's the one who kind of spearheaded the whole thing and, you know, planned it all out and was like, we need these carvings. So I went in and did the carvings and I'm like, oh, that's great. Like, that was quick. What, you know, do you want to do more? I was like, sure. And they're like, okay, we want to make maps on this wall of Polynesia, like and carve all the islands. And so, yeah, it's like one is Polynesia, like all Polynesian islands. One is yep. uh, Caribbean islands. And then one is like the coastline of California and the Hawaiian islands. So it's kind of okay. like, you know, like where rum comes from and where tiki kind of comes from. And then like, you know, California has been, I don't know, a big proponent in the history of tiki. So it's kind of weird because we don't really think of California, but California that I mean, that's where tiki is. You go to Hawaii, right. and there's not much, but you go to California yes. and there's tons. Right, right. So they wanted like, you know, like a nod to all of this. And like, you know, within tiki, like rum is kind of the spirit of choice or whatever it comes from the yep. Caribbean. So they're like, let's put all that on there. Like that's part of part of this. You know what I mean? Was so, it yeah, weird carving islands? islands? And then I did, what's that? Was it so you did the islands? Yeah, I did all. What, I was it weird? The whole wall. I did the whole wall except for the two big tiki's. Okay. The two. Yeah. So then there's like, I don't know. If you look close, there's some molding that I did, like really cool carved molding. There's waves up where the boats are. Yeah. And if you turn around, on either side of the bar, there's like a sea serpent, and I did that. So. uh yeah, I was just excited to be involved in that. It was like a huge thing. And they had so many cool people, Ivan, working on it. But they had, you know, Crazy Owl did that huge carving. So it was like in there watching them carve these things. And then Bosco did a bunch of cool carvings in there. And of course. Ben did a bunch of stuff in there, like the little huts in the back. He did all those. So you can was, really tell the Tiki bars were like, there are tiki bars that are made by people that really love tiki. Yeah. And then there are tiki bars that are very commercialized. Mm -hmm. And you can tell when you go into like Zombie Village, or if you go into Frankie's Tiki Room, uh, if you go in into any of these places and you see like Crazy Al, Doug Horn, Big Toe, yeah. you, all these crazy people, yeah. uh, that feels so cool. At least for me, because like I met a lot of you guys uh, on Instagram just watching you. And then to go to a bar, uh, that I've never been to before and see a painting and be like, oh, crap, like, I know who did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I love it, too. I think they love it, too, just because we all love this, you know what I mean? Like, we want to make the space that we want to hang out in, too, you know what I mean? Like, so it was fun to be part of that. It was fun, too, because he included all these people, and Doc is really good about that. Like, you know, this was a big bar is a big uh, it's a it's a group that owns several bars so they had like enough money yep. to, to do a good job right and so he like pulled all these people in and put it all together you know what i mean and i think that's really cool so he's right now uh at a place up in napa and they're about to open in a couple of weeks called wilfred's um, yeah so i saw you carve a tiki yeah yeah so I did, that's what I've been doing now because it's just, it's fun to work with him, you know, and you find someone you like to work with and uh, yeah, he like understands how everything works and he gives me freedom to do, you know, he's like, just carve something cool. Like address you, make something, you know, that people will like. Uh, so yeah, he saw that big tiki. I went to them up there and I was like, hey, I'm, you know, they had already kind of built it. Bamboo Band was working on it, and then Billy Crud was working on it. He did Golden Tiki in Vegas, yep. and uh, and I was like, if you want anything, you know, I'd love to do something for you, mugs or whatever. And they're like, yeah, we have a big log on site. Why don't you come check it out? Maybe you can carve it. So I went and saw it. I was like, this is huge. Yes, <laughs> <I'll do laughs> that. It looks <laughs> massive. That thing must weigh a ton. Oh yeah, they had to get a forklift to move it around. <laughs> <laughs> How do you how do you approach carving something like that? Do you uh, just kind of like work with the wood because I mean like yeah. you're gonna hit knots and stuff, right? Yeah, uh, but uh, I mean cha a chainsaw. <laughs> it's not it's eucalyptus, so it's not it's totally different than like palm wood tiki's. Okay, uh, the wood is really hard, so you have to use a chainsaw to 
make any kind of difference in it. And he just, I don't, you know, it's pretty tricky. It was laying down and it just kind of, I drew it all out and it's kind of curved, you know, like it stands, it's kind of curved like that, uh, which I could tell laying down, but then when they stood it up, it was more curved than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> So that was kind of fun. They're like, you, you know, I carved it on the ground and then they stood up. I was like, oh, it still looks cool. Like, that's good, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but yeah. What's that? See, I would have thought that you carved it with it standing up. Yeah, I mean, that, just... that would be ideal, but it was, you know, they have to get a forklift to come out to do yeah. it. So they're like, here it is. Can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so I just kind of carved it on the ground. Would get a couple guys to roll it halfway over so I could carve more on one side and then roll it and carve more on the other side. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I mean, it worked out fine. It's just, I don't know, kind of changing in your brain how you're going to, how you see it. And then, you know, right. they stand it up and you're like, that's a little different than I thought, but it's still fine. So like even the uh, big tiki's in zombie village, those big, huge ones that they did. Yeah. They did those laying down. They had to build special tables to to put them on. They're actually made of like uh, several logs. Uh, I was going to say, there's no way that's one so piece. So it's like a whole bunch together, but they carved it as one piece, you know? So they then they had to take them all apart and move them. They carved them in Oakland, and then they moved them to San Francisco and like had to reinstall all of it and then stain it. So... They carved all that laying down. Um, it's just more practical, you know. But, uh, yeah. How long did it take you to do the one in Napa? Uh, it probably took, like, five or six days, I'm going to say. Like, I would have drive up there and work on it and come back. I can only do maybe, like, a couple days a week because it's just it's so tiring. I'm not used to that kind of like hand movement like running a chainsaw like yeah all you know bending over like it would just be so sore for two days i'm like i can't do that for a couple more days so but you know it took like a few weeks uh what did you use to carve the boats in zombie village uh mostly like an angle grinder i did like cut the shape out with a like a jigsaw you know, like a hand one, and then, yeah. and then mostly like an angle grinder is what I like to use most of the time for carving small, like smaller things if it's soft enough. It's a little more manageable than a chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people use chainsaws for everything, but I'm like, it's just so big and chunky, kind of. You know, like yeah. this angle grinder, so I can get a lot more detailed. And but uh, it depends on the wood, but. Um, Mostly that, and then, you know, we'll go down to, like, a little rotary tool, like, air compressor-driven, kind of like a Dremel, but more powerful. Yeah. Different tips on it for that kind of thing. Um, and then I think those, I the ones at Zombie Village, I, like, stained them and did some painting, and then when we hang them up, I, like, painted a little more. Uh, we didn't know they were going to do all that light stuff on those that was another um, question i was like did you have to plan for the projection mapping or did they just did that afterwards yeah they did that after uh which is awesome it looks so cool but we didn't know you know they were going to do that until we kind of like i think they didn't know but some company approached them was like hey we can do this cool stuff so they like that was amazing they mapped the whole wall so that uh, I don't know if you, how much you paid attention to it, but there's like oh, I went right up to the it. inch. Yeah, I was like looking at the wall to see like what color the actual wall was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put these big uh, like canvases up, kind of of the ocean, and then had yep. somebody paint that. I didn't paint that; someone else painted it. And they, because they were gonna do like this cool old map painting on there, like it'll make it look like an old map and then put my carvings over it. But then they got this projection mapping. They're like, oh, we could just, what do you, you want a, a moon to go across? Let's do that. <laughs> like pirate ships yeah. and krakens. Like, what do you want? Like, yeah. So that was kind of cool. So I kind of just painted it blue and 
uh, yeah, that was crazy laying those maps out because they're so big. So the space we were carving cool them. Cool if they in. could like update it. Oh, like for, yeah. Like for special events. Like so many people doing my Halloween and, and that kind of stuff. Like if they oh, were able to be... somehow like change I mean, up the map. I would think so. Like, cause. It, it should be. Yeah, they map, they, they basically like scanned the wall. Yep. Uh, and I mean, I mean, they do this at other places. I've seen it, you know, other places. They like scanned the wall uh, and then they went back and like created these little videos or whatever to put on it. So that if they have the scan, I'm assuming they could, I'm like that would be awesome, right? Make like a Halloween, do for like a month or something. Yep. Spooky Halloween thing, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much work that is. Uh, I'm not like involved with them much anymore. Not in a bad way. It's just, you know, I did my work yeah. and now I just go there and have to- Wait, are you telling me that you don't have any experience with projection mapping? You, I Woody guess. Miller? <laughs> <laughs> I like doing things with my hands. So, <laughs> you know, not yet. But- uh, Fair enough. Okay, yeah. let's, do, let's do a giveaway. Yeah. Here's a question. Uh, they're gonna get this uh, glass Surfside Sips straw with the ghost yeah. on it. Uh, the question is, Woody Miller was in this magazine, Exotica Modern, if I'm saying that right. What issue is this? What issue did Woody Miller have the cover of Ooh. Exotica Modern? And I'll watch the comments and the first person to guess it correctly yeah. gets the straw. How did this come about? Yeah. Uh, did Ken Mai approach you? The ultimate Mai Tai, I don't know if you know him. Yep. Um, yeah. There's a friend of mine in the Bay and he sometimes hangs out at Contigua with us and he's been writing like some articles for them. So he was like, hey, I want to do an article on you, you know, if you want. I'm like, yes, let's yeah. do that. <laughs> well, you've so, been reading the magazine for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. I saw it on your Instagram, now. so that's going to be cool. I see. Yeah. So we did get the right answer. Uh, the oh, first, yes. A bunch of people are guessing it now, but the first person to get it was uh, Krakatoa Chris. So Krakatoa Chris, uh, you got this cool ghost surfside straw. Cool. We'll hit you up afterwards. I love those. I think I'm using one now, but it's just plain for my drink. That's cool glass, though. And you got those on your shop. Yeah, what are you still in glass. stock? Huh? Can people still buy them? Yeah, there's still some on the website, I think. Should be. I got to check it, but yeah. Getting right on. on. And I'll pro I'll do some new ones, too. I want to do a zombie glass. I think that'd be a fun thing. There's this, a huge I, shortage right now. Did you yeah, hear about that? Yeah. That's, I wanted to do that for Oasis, and they were like, you can't. <laughs> <the time." laughs> yeah. Yeah, everything's a little crazy right now. No, but the guys that uh, you use Culture Cove, so yeah, uh -huh. they're amazing. Yeah, Don and Gene, they're Jean. really good guys. Jean's awesome. Yeah, they're really good, and it, it, the, everything comes out great. Like this is my third or fourth my tag glass. Everything's okay. Awesome. Can I see it again? Can you hold it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a wrap around? Yeah. So it says here, two okay, color. So so the uh, the purple and the orange, there's your color gap, right? Yeah. I love that. For people that don't know, so in order to get your uh, your glass to be printed all the way around, you have to have a gap in each color. So, like, I'm one of those people, once you know it, like, every time you yeah, see my you tie glass, you got to find the gap. So, yeah. so they, they, I don't know, they used to, or maybe it was a different factory, they used to be able to overlap them so you could have the gaps in different spots. But now they're like, you need the gap together, which is kind of tricky for designing. Yep. But, uh, I don't know. And then, you know, like so if challenge. you get more, more colors, you get like some of these glasses of like four or five colors. You know, they got to make it work all the way around. Like it's tricky. It adds like a dollar though. Yeah. <laughs> Every color is like an additional dollar. <laughs> it doesn't seem like that much until you buy a whole bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. When people are like, why is this Mai Tai glass $18? Well, <laughs> that's why. Yeah. It's got four or five colors. Colors, yeah. 
So I, I didn't realize until I was reading your article in this that in addition to making mugs and carving tiki's and all this other stuff, you DJ. Yeah. Not a lot. Are you still are you still DJing at Forbidden Island? I haven't since the since the pandemic. They haven't really had DJs back much, a little bit, but uh, yeah. I mean, that was like I. I'm friends with the owner and a few people there that like kind of run the music program. And I don't know, I had this idea. I was like, Hey, I love bossa Nova. And like, that's my thing. I have all those bossa Nova records. Like, would you let me DJ? <laughs> and they're like, sure. Like try a Sunday. So, uh, that was, was it that was easy? Of, or did you like hound them? Like, no, really let me play bossa Nova. Oh, and they eventually they told him. Yeah, they're into the guy that Tanoa, who does the, the who kind of runs the, you know, DJ and music. He's like, oh, sounds cool. It's a good idea. And I'm like, it's, I think it could work. It's like a nice mellow vibe for Tiki Bar. It, it's not common, but it fits. Yeah, right. I mean, and sometimes, like, at some places, you'll hear like one or two Boston of songs mixed in, you know, and then when I do it, it's not strictly that. Like, sometimes I'll, play some Brazilian music or like cha-cha-cha, a little more dancey samba music or like go into like some more Hawaiian music. Yep. So I'm actually DJing this Sunday for the first time in like a year and a half or two years nice. at a different different place in San Francisco. They have live bands and stuff a lot. And so they've been having DJs. So I'll be is it a secret or is it? No, is it... it's, called, it's called the Riptide, this bar. It's okay. a really cool bar it's in San Francisco. Sunday night, five to nine. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't live on the East Coast, I'd be there. Yeah, it's like they, what do they, they name themselves? It's like what, the bar at the end of the world or something. Cause it's like, it's right out at the kind of the edge of San Francisco. And then it's yep. a few more blocks in the beach. So they're kind of like at the end of the coast, you know? It's a cool place, and they do. Um, I don't know. I'm friends with someone who, uh, like, kind of runs everything there, like a manager. So she's like, "We're starting to have more bands and DJs, you know. If you want to do, it. I was like, I'd love to, you know, because Back I like to I collect it, music, and I love all kinds of music, and I collect records, and so it's like fun to be able to go and play your records, you know. Uh, it's, what is it's, your because. It can be hard, right? Like, so if you love mugs, but then you end up making mugs, does it does it still feel like a hobby or does it feel like work? And if it feels like work, what is your outlet? What do you do? Uh, yeah, it's both. I think that's why I do so many things and not just mugs is because I like to be creative and do stuff. And if my creative thing is this and then it becomes work, like what else am I doing to be creative, you know? Yep. So, like, then I would start wood carving and be, start doing that. And then, like, a friend's opening a tiki bar. So, I'm like, I want to do some stuff for your bar. Like, let me try to do some carvings and lamps and things. Um, you know, and it kind of snowballs. So, I still love doing it. It is a little bit like work, but not bad. Like, I love doing it. And I love being able to do different things all the time. You know, like, one day working here carving a tiki one day in the studio glazing mugs or whatever like next day yep. I, built a, I built a couple like home tiki bars this summer for people just like a uh, yeah i saw that on your website are you open to commissions like if, if someone wanted to have their uh, home tiki bar built would you do that at this point yeah 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 i've done what's what's years. like what's the process for that uh basically like send me pictures of the room or what like you know like get in touch and yep. let me know what what you're looking for and then try and find we can try and find a time you know that works uh depends on how busy i am at the moment or whatever like it might be a couple of months before i can start it three or four months Do they just give you like a theme like hey i want something nautical and you just kind of run with that yeah, yeah. And then I can come up with ideas. I like like this, so this one I did this summer. Uh, 
she had a room and she had a painted orange and she was like, I want to do some stuff. Like, I don't know really what to do. There's a window. So I was like, well, here's an idea for what we can do for your window. She had this cool tapa cloth. So I made like, basically it looks like framed tapa cloth up on the wall. I did like carved uh, like frames around it, but yep. they're panels that you can open. So the window, uh, you can still open the window, you know, if you want that. Or nice. you can set it. Yeah, and cover it, and it looks like a frame on the wall. A window in a tiki bar? What? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, because in the day, like, it's a it's a bedroom. It's, they're not sleeping in a bed. It's like, you know, maybe they want air to come in. <laughs> you want to open yeah. the window, right? So you don't want to, like, completely block it off. Uh, or she didn't anyway. And then, like, there was a closet, so we turned that into the – like the bar, you know, there's, I just filled it with shelves and lights and put their liquor in there. Um, so kind of come up with ideas like that. Uh, she, on her ceiling, I was like, I like the orange walls, you know, like every tiki bar is just filled with matting, but I like yep. to have color. I think that's cool. Like you like orange, leave the orange walls and we'll just put things on the orange wall and then do the ceiling. So I did the ceiling with matting. And I made like these fake beams, like a false beam. So it looks like carved wood beam running it, you know, both ways across the room and then can run like electrical cords in there and stuff like that. So like stuff like that, I could just come up with ideas if, you know, someone's like, hey, I have this little area. Like, what should I do here? That's have you I, ever I had a space like where you're like, I really don't know what to do with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's fun because then I'm like, oh, you can do this, you can do that. Here's a few ideas and shelves, you know, because also like people collect stuff. Like you have, like see like yeah. all the things you have behind you, like. Shh, no, you don't. <laughs> like, there's nothing there. <laughs> and you're like kind of never done, right? It's not like, okay, here's my stuff. I'm done. This is all I yeah. have. Like, you're going to keep buying things because there's just always cool stuff. So like incorporating all that building shelves and things like that it's good ways to like you know make it personal to what's you and not just make like nautical bar sorry this isn't nautical doesn't fit but like it's your stuff so it should fit in your bar right yep yeah so yeah it's kind of fun. i reached the point where like i can't keep buying like it's a strict one in one out policy <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I, I mean, because I collect mugs, too, and I haven't been buying as much, but, like, I had to put parameters on it, right? So, it was like, okay, like, when I first started collecting, I was like, oh, just buy everything that's cool, which is a lot, <laughs> you know? It's too much. Yeah, and then... I Especially like, now. I don't know how it was eight years ago, but now it's like there's six or seven mug releases every weekend. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it it's not like that, but a lot of it then was, oh, my gosh, look at all these cool mugs that people... That, people have done in the past like i'm gonna try and find this on ebay yeah we're like at a tiki event like shop and you find some cool stuff and a lot of it like you just you'll never get it but but yeah so then i was like you know bars would come out with mugs every once in a while but it wasn't as often as now but then i had to make a rule like only buy a mug if i've been to the bar or the event right yep. like i'm not gonna buy a mug from an event if i haven't been even if it's awesome but then it's like uh, incentive to go to the bar or to the event. <laughs> okay, now I have to go to whatever state. Oh, to go to shucks, Tiki I Cali. have to go to Tiki Caliente again. Oh. Right, right. Well, like Undertow. Undertow puts out rad stuff, you know. I really love that bar. Um, yeah. And I went to a, like a mug release down there a couple of years ago for like this mug that Doug Horn did and it was so cool. And now I feel like, oh, now I can buy other mugs from Undertow because I've been there. Because <laughs> I really like the stuff they're putting out, you know. You don't have to go every time. No. You just have to go once and then you have a free right. pass to buy every mug they sell. I've been there, so now I can buy that mug. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I don't know. Or like, I like I like the stuff too from, you know, people like me or Scott or Rob or like I bought some stuff from Michael Spica of Jungle Modern. At Caliente this last weekend. He's gonna be on thirteen nights too. Oh, nice! I'm excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. He's such a cool. I was, um... So here's a question for you. Uh, so I've been to Tiki Oasis. I went for the first time this year. I went yeah. to Arizona. I went to San Diego. Uh, 
obviously it's both baby doe and auto but they have very different vibes san diego and arizona yeah i've never been to tiki caliente i think you just went to it right yeah how would you describe like how how is it similar or different from tiki oasis going to caliente it's it's uh i mean so it's like it, i think it's more like arizona size okay. maybe even smaller than that i actually haven't been to arizona oasis yet but i think it's it's a lot smaller than San Diego. It is. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like a big family party, it feels like. It's all like at the Tropics Hotel. So yeah. like, I mean, people are staying elsewhere too, but like, you know, all takes place there and it's like old school and it's kind of just quirky and weird. Rory, the guy that runs it, is like just he has the time of his life, which makes it fun for everyone. You know, and so he like does yacht rock stuff, and there's a yacht rock band, you know, like yeah. Hawaiian ukulele band. Jason Lee played, so it's kind of like all whatever stuff Rory likes, you know. But which is cool because it's just a really fun party. It feels less like an event and more like just a fun party with a bunch of yeah. friends, you know. It's pretty chill too because it's in Palm Springs, and so. I don't know, everything's beautiful, you know? And uh, it's it's a little more like chill vibe. Is it, uh, do people still like branch off and like go to all the different bars or is it pretty much? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's, you know, everyone has like maybe groups of friends or you see other friends and are like, hey, we're gonna go to lunch at this place. And you invite a bunch of people and you know, whoever goes, goes. We go to breakfast, like whoever can make it out goes or wants to or. Yep go to a bar, you know, invite like a few people, you meet new people or see some of your long time old friends and invite them out. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, because there's less going on than like Tiki Oasis. Oasis, they have a lot of seminars and you could just stay there and do stuff, you know, all day. It, it's like impossible to do everything at Tiki Oasis. Yeah, you can. There's so much going on that it's like yeah. stacked, right? So it's like, do I go see Tikiaki Orchestra or do I see Sven Kirsten and his seminar? And I can't do both. Yeah, you kind of have to just say, I'm going to pick a couple of things a day and do that. You know, <laughs> that was our thing we had this year. Uh, we went this year. And my girlfriend was like, I'm just I'm getting so overwhelmed. There's like so many things. She's like, I never have time to sit and chill by the pool. So like on Sunday, they rented like a little cabana out there by the pool and they're like, we're just gonna do this today. I'm like, that's totally awesome, do that. You know, you're gonna miss stuff at Tiki Oasis. And- but As long as you're having a good time, that's all that matters. Yeah, right. right. Having a good you time, just do you. Yeah, you run into people, everyone comes by your cabana, it's totally fun. So yeah, that's kind of more like what Caliente is. You just hang out by the pool and Sometimes they have bands and there's only a couple room parties, one or two each night. So, yeah. But there's probably not the lines, right? I mean, there's there's lines, this? but they're not as long because, you know, there's only a tiny, there are smaller rooms. There's no band yeah. coming in the room. It's just like one person handing out drinks and you go in for five minutes and you leave. So it's a lot quicker going through it everything's just smaller and yeah um, so someone just asked in the comments uh grail mug do you have one? Oh yes i do the woody buzz toy story staff mug oh the do. pixar one yeah i have a couple pixar mugs but i don't have that one because woody and i know Good a luck. guy named buzz and that's both of our <laughs> both of us are like if we ever get that mug <laughs> And I know a couple of people at Pixar, but I'm like, come on, can you hook me up? They're like, I have one and I don't want to get rid of it. Yeah, they're not going to get rid of it. Yeah, and I'm not paying, you know, two. You don't want to pay $2,000 on, on eBay? Yeah. <laughs> no. I don't make that kind of money selling mugs. Uh, I actually found one online uh, that I thought was it. As someone posted a photo. And not that, tell store. me you didn't spend $500 on a knockoff. And I was like, oh my God, I think this is it. And they're like, yeah, this mug could be like 30, 40 bucks. Uh, I'm like, I'll buy it. I'll take it and ship it to me. And so I did and I got it. And it's like a knockoff. It's like one of those. <laughs> I was so mad. I was like, dang it. Like, you know, you don't really know. And a lot of people don't know mugs, don't know what's a knockoff and what's a real mug, you know? 
So that, it, this stuff's been going crazy lately. We yeah. just had so some of our mugs uh, got knocked off on, on Facebook, and people just oh, like really? take the photos and then they sell them. But obviously, like they don't have the product because like it's not their mug; it's not even out yet. And they did it to uh, Biggs. They did it to Shag. Yeah. Been a big issue on Facebook now. I don't get how they, what are they, what are they doing? Are they just trying to collect money and then you never get a product? Or yeah. They, so they create like a fake business. They post photos of the mugs. They sell as much as they can in a limited window and then they shut it down. And yeah. Yeah. Close their accounts. Yeah. Which is sad. I don't, yeah. It's crazy. It's, I don't know. It's weird that mugs are such a thing now that. People are doing this to make money, you know what I mean? <laughs> Have you noticed a substantial change in yeah. the past eight years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I came in, there was already people doing Bosco, been doing it, and Crazy yeah. Owl, and Tiki Tony, all these people, like, have been doing it for already eight years before that, you know what I mean? And so I was like, this new guy, and I'm like, I'm not trying to steal your business. I just love doing this. But then everything, you know, it just kept growing and Tiki kept growing. The community kept growing and people kept wanting more mugs. So, you know, it was enough for everyone to keep going. And now, you know, how it is now. Um, so, yeah, it was like you could go to Oasis and meet most of the people that made mugs one year, you know. And now it's, there's just, it's a lot. It's impossible. Yeah, so many new bars have opened since then, too, you know, so there's, like, all the new bars making mugs. I think it's cool. I mean, there's just all kinds, too, you know. Everyone has their own, like, design style, they own their own thing they're doing. A lot of Disney crossover and all this, like, I don't know. It's all, I think it's it's all good, like, you know. Yeah, I, I think it's it's, it's cool. Uh, for let's just like take a rum barrel for example. You know how many people have made the rum barrels? Yeah. So if someone's like, I want to make a rum barrel, it's like, wow, well, who cares? There's 300 of those anyways. But then you have someone like uh, Van Tiki who made the uh, the Smuggler's Cove oh, all idol ones. Yeah. And like, wow. I know. You gotta oh, have that mug. So it's just so because so you know good. ideas have been used, yeah, you know, people can put their own spin on it. That's funny you say that because, like, I have a rum barrel coming out, I don't know, soon-ish, maybe in January. I had this idea. I was doing, like, I do these sunken treasure mugs where I'll add, uh, oh, hold on, let me pull one down. These kind of guys where I'll take one of my mugs and then I add coral. Yep. Like, whatever. Uh, so all those little things are those uh you're making those by hand and attaching them yeah yeah so this is the first crab that i did but yeah like all of these things adding them all and then when they're colored like it's all i paint it all hand painted uh and they're never the same you know what i mean so it's just kind of like a one-off like gecko's been doing these kind of things for a while really cool yeah, Gecko, cool. he, I think, he, like, he repurposes mugs, right? Like, a mug breaks. Yeah, I don't know how he's doing it to Gecko that, and, yeah. you know, like, turn it into some art piece. Yeah, this yeah. stuff is bonkers. Yeah, it's crazy. But so I got this, like, a, a sunken rum barrel, basically, is what I'm, my next mug I'll be doing. Um, it's got, like, a, a little porthole on it, like, starfish and a bunch of coral and stuff like that. I think it'd be really fun to glaze. Like, just That's some exciting. Of, Right, a different, different like barrel idea. I don't know. It's hard anymore to be. I don't know to count. You can't come out with something that's just like this is like totally new. No one's ever thought of this. Like, there's nothing all that new, you know. Like you said, like rum barrel. Like it's a barrel. Like it's been done a thousand times. Like how many more moais do we need? There's yeah. moais, right? But like everyone has their own spin on it, so you know. Uh, the way you glaze and the way you sculpt things like all these things kind of come into play and like you have your own unique thing so it's kind of cool to see where everything's going that way um and it's hard to you know come up with new ideas and be like well what can i do that hasn't been done so many things are being done now but i don't know i like making traditional tiki stuff too more actual yep. like 
tiki's and... yeah you kind of have that same like authentic kind of feel that yeah. scott and rob have yeah 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 they they taught me a lot about it back in the okay beginning. i know we're getting uh towards the end of this time i think we're on yes. overtime right now we'll do one more giveaway ask cool. a couple more questions if that's cool with you yeah and then we'll give away the mug uh, so this pin here from the Black Lagoon Rum, this is a ghost pin. Look, it's spooky. Nice. Uh, so this is going to be an easy question because we did some hard questions over the past few nights. So okay. the question is, this is just whoever types the fastest, basically. <laughs> uh, we've done 13 nights of Tiki Frights. How many years? What year is this? First person to write that in the comments yeah. gets this pin. Uh, I'll just watch. Okay, so uh, a yeah, question, yeah. another question I had for you. Is there a particular yeah. island? I know you do like uh, island-inspired art, right, with a California spin. Is there a particular island that speaks to you over another? Uh, I have been to Maui the most. I used to go there a lot. So, like, I know it well. I really like Hawaiian tiki's, like, you know, ku and... I've been doing yep. a lot of Marquesian, or not a lot, but like a few things. I don't know, kind of all of it. I don't really have like one. There's, I, I, have, I haven't been outside of Hawaii, so I've never been to like Fiji or the Marquesas okay. or Tahiti, any of that. So I hope to go to all of those one day. Um, Me too. Know. From what I hear, some of them are rough. Yeah. I hope, that's, I, I hope that is uh, like a, just... You know, sometimes people like they haven't been someplace and it's just scary to them. So then yeah. they make up like it's a terrible place. And yeah. that's kind of what I'm hoping in my head. But I still have to like do the research because I'm hoping that some of these beautiful islands are not as scary as people say they are. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how scary they would be. They all have like, there's so many tourists now. Traveling yeah. the world is so much easier now. And so I feel like there's tourist areas on all these islands probably so it can't be that bad if you stick to that Just don't stray know. too far <laughs> right, right. um don't i don't know i mean like hawaiian islands is you know it's not scary at all it's super fun which it's, islands have you been to in hawaii i've been all of them except Kauai. so the cowboy I gotta island make, <laughs> i gotta make it i gotta make it to Kauai. um if I, so I, my favorite island is Maui, so same yeah. as yours. But yeah. if I'm ever, like, I find out, like, I only have a few days to live, I'm going to Kauai. Because yeah. Because the, the north, I think it would be, yeah, northern part, uh, Hanalei Bay, where they wrote uh, Puff the Magic Dragon about, is yeah. just, like, the most ridiculous place I have ever been in my life. Yeah. It looks so beautiful. It looks amazing. I, I don't know, it just never worked out that I've gone, like, my parents used to have a place on Maui so I could go, you know, and stay. So I was like, yeah, we'll just, I'll just go there. It's affordable. And then I've been to Oahu a couple of times. I love Oahu because you have like Honolulu the city and then you have, you know, the north part of the islands, a little yep. more natural. But I love Honolulu. It's just, even though it's a city, it's different. You know what I mean? Like the whole feels, feels different. Uh, then yeah, and then the Big Island is like really fun. It's kind of like just wild and natural. Uh, I have some friends that live out there, so I like to go there more and see more of it. It's just so big, you know. It takes time, but yeah, it's most affordable real estate. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Once every twenty years, you might have some lava in your backyard, but heck, right. you get to live right. in Hawaii. <laughs> it's gonna be ready for that. <laughs> All right. So I see people sounding off in the comments. The first yeah. person to get the uh, the question correct was Selinda's sweet spot. So you got this pen here. Cool. So we will Congrats. mention you afterwards. Congrats. All right, man. So cool. what's next for you? You got this uh, You got this mug coming out on Saturday, right? Is there a specific yeah. time? Got that. I'll have a few other things Saturday. Um, but I'm working on some mugs for the Contiki Room here in Oakland. Yeah, so the, that just opened, know. right? It's open, yeah. So the Contiki is downtown, and the same people opened a new restaurant and bar. The bar portion is the Contiki room. Uh, so I'm working on a mug for that. 
um, right now, which hopefully will be out in the next month. It, you know, with COVID, everything's been, we were like, let's do a big mug release. And they're like, I don't think we can have this many people at a party. You know what I mean? So um, I think it, that's going to be one of your uh, editions of 500, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm trying to do a hundred of it. So I did 20 in one glaze. I'm going to do 80 in a different glaze. So that'll be like a hundred of that. Um, and then I'm doing, I actually, I, the tattoo shop that I go to, I did a Bob mug for him. So I'm working on some more for that. Um, it's called Good Tattoo in Oakland. Okay. And uh, he's this cool guy. He's like, he loves mugs. So he's like, I want a mug. Can you do me a mug? So he came up with this idea for a Bob. So I'm working on some of that. It's going to be like 50 total of that. And then uh, this. And then that's an all new mug. mug? Huh? That's an all new mug? Yeah. Never before seen. Late eyes right. on. Actually, let me show it to you. Uh, this is one of the ones that was a little bit funky in the glaze but so there it is fantastic uh, man yeah that's well i like the color funny. on the inside too thanks yeah good tattoo uh, and then i did some more their bright colors outside anyway that's yeah you know it was kind of like for him but uh, doing 50 of those. I did, I, he already sold a few, like 20 of them. So I'm doing like 30 more. And then there's uh, the rum barrel, the sunken barrel. That'll be, I don't know, December, January, something maybe. I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. It's going to be cool. Uh, I posted a little bit about it this summer when I was doing the sculpt for it. I carved out a wax. So I was. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, I have it. Do you make all your mugs out of wax? Uh, yeah, I started with clay, but then um, when I was at this studio with the other artists, they used wax, and I was like, this is great. Because you can melt it down, you know, you can, like, add to it and subtract yeah. from it, just melt it or whatever, and it stays hard. So there's the... Is that it? That's the baby? Yeah. It's got like junk all over it from making a mold. It's kind of like all dirty. Oh, you got the little like diver, diver yeah. window. Like you like hole, a starfish. And you got like, man, that's so awesome. It's like, you know, all this coral and seashells and clamshell and stuff. Yeah, I think it'll be pretty fun. I see all these hearts blasting up the side of the screen. Yeah, People are saying, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I posted a little bit about it this summer when I was carving it. You know, and I was like, when is that coming out? And I'm like, it's a ways off. Uh, I'm trying to get better about being ahead and not just like what I'm doing right now. And then I don't have anything coming in the future, you know? Yeah. So I like try to line things up and uh, that way you're, you know, always working on something. So that's. Don't let people push you. Yeah. You, no. got, you got music to DJ, man. <laughs> you got to get back to the Forbidden Island. Yeah. Definitely. The bossa nova can't wait. Yes. Totally. Yeah, next time you come up to Bay, hit me up. Definitely, dude. I still I haven't been to Last Rites. Oh, you got to do that. It's right cool. passed out. It's yeah. Have village. you been to any in the East Bay then? Like Forbidden Island? or? I've been to Forbidden Island. I haven't been to. So when I went, it was like on a weekend. And like everything's closed on Sundays. Yeah. So I haven't been to Con Tiki. I haven't been to... Uh, the rum. I haven't been to yeah. Trader Vic's. I still haven't oh. been to. Okay. So I, I'll be back at the Bay. Yeah. Do like a Friday, Saturday trip would be fun. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you can make it happen, it's, everything's open and yeah, there's a lot. We have a lot of good bars here. You know, I think like I used to think LA as kind of being like the Tiki Bar Central, but the more that I visit places, I think like the Bay Area, San Francisco is where I, uh, yeah. If I'm gonna go on a tiki, tiki yeah, it's, uh, it's been parade coming along, but now there's new one in Walnut Creek. Tiki Tom's, Tiki Tom's, yeah, it's yep. super cool. The Wilfred's in Napa is gonna be open soon. There's one in San Jose that's gonna open soon. So, yeah, we're just the place is awesome. blowing up. It's a good time to be alive. <laughs> You've waited eight years for this. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, it cool. was, has been great talking to you. Yeah. You announced the winner of this uh, oh. Mr. Bali High mug. Nice. And uh, we Wait, Is this a one. random draw, or do you have to answer a question for that? So this is a random draw. People entered before, and I've already picked the winner. Um, and the winner, so they can enter on Instagram, Facebook, or the website. This particular time, the winner came from Instagram, and their username is, I think they're a Star Wars fan. It's Elvis Trooper. Oh, nice. So at Elvis Trooper, you won this Bali High mug. Congratulations. Cool. Yeah, that's a cool one. Thank you so much, Woody. Yeah. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. It's been fun. We'll have to talk again soon. Thanks yeah, for definitely. joining us on 13 Nights of Tiki Frights. Yeah. And I am, uh, I'm stoked not only for the barrel, but for your mug coming out on Saturday. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Cool. Thanks for having me on. It's been fun. Yeah. For yeah. sure, man. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. Mahalo.